Hello, and welcome to the freshman orientation webinar uh, covering the departments of biomedical engineering, chemical and biomolecular engineering, macromolecular science and engineering, and material science and engineering. My name is David Schiraldi. I'm the chairman and a faculty member in macromolecular science and engineering, and I'll be discussing both my department and our sister department, material science and engineering. I'd like to introduce my colleagues to the right. I'm Professor Seidel of the Department of Biomedical Engineering. I'm Mohan Shankaran, and I'm a faculty in chemical and biomolecular engineering. If you look at this slide, you'll see here, here are our contact information for the three of us, and also a fourth faculty member, Professor DeGeer, in material science and engineering. Please, throughout the summer, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions at all about our departments or, or freshman uh, coursework. Uh, We'd like to start talking about the, the core of the, the engineering degree. Um, and the first part of the case core are the math, physics, chemistry, and uh, SAGE's communication courses, as well as humanities and social sciences. And so as an incoming student, you will be taking calculus courses. And you'll see there are four required courses. And you will come in at whatever level is appropriate for you. I'll talk about more of that in a second. You will take uh, two, physics, two semesters of physics. You'll take a semester of freshman chemistry and three SAGE's uh, write, writing and communication courses. Uh, typically, you'll take two of those in your first year and one in your second year. And you will also take tw 12 credits of humanities and social sciences, which you can start early. You can spread out over the years if you need to. Um, now, many of you will have taken advanced placement courses. If you have, that, that can allow you to skip over some of the introductory courses. Um, and a point on that is if you feel very comfortable about those courses, you've taken this AP course and you're, you feel strong, you, know, you can go ahead and jump into, into that higher level course and skip the intro ones. If you feel very shaky and you want to go ahead and, and take the first level math or physics or chemistry course, you're certainly able to do that. And if you're kind of on the fence, uh, we have a two-week period where you can do add drop, and what you can do is take both, sit in on both uh, the lectures of the lower and the higher level course, and decide which one is a best fit for you. Um, you'll see in the slides the details on which courses you can skip. Um, the rest of the, uh, the engineering core are a series of, of special courses that we have in the department or in the school. You'll see there's a course in computer programming, you'll see uh, a chemistry materials course, statics and mechanics of materials, circuits and electrical engineering type courses, uh, thermodynamics, and then there's also an English uh, level course that you'll take towards the end of your, your undergraduate career. Um, and so these, uh, again, you, want, you would like to take these as early as possible in your career. And as we talk about the individual major programs, each, each program has some, uh, some preferences as to which ones you take first. So I'd like to pass this over to Professor Sadell, who will talk about some of the specifics of, of the biomedical engineering first year. The courses uh, that are uh, listed here are typical of all the courses, that, uh, the courses in all of the engineering programs. Um, as Dr. Shiraldi mentioned, uh, we have uh, programs uh, that involve a sequence in uh, calculus and differential equations. And again, you choose the one that's going to be most appropriate for your initial level. Choices are uh, in the first year be, uh, between uh, computer programming and physics, when to take one or the other, and uh, it's uh, a matter of individual choice for the most part. The uh, chemistry uh, sequence uh, uh, involves the basic chemistry, chemistry 111, followed by the chemistry of materials. We do have some things that's specific with respect to biomedical engineering for those who have a special interest in learning about the various possibilities in terms of this field, but it's an optional course. For those who are specifically interested in minors, uh, we uh, suggest that you might want to take one of the uh, courses associated with the minors uh, as an, uh, uh, in lieu of the introduction to biomedical engineering. 
Um, with respect to these uh, courses, although, again, it, uh, it's, uh, this is a general template, if we look at the next slide, we'll see that uh, there are a number of different tracks within biomedical engineering, and there are some differences in terms of preferences with respect to what students will take in some cases uh, with respect to these uh, tracks, even during in the first year. And uh, as a consequence, uh, we uh, would recommend that when you have questions, you contact faculty, as we'll talk about at the end of this uh, program. And then, uh, then in this particular aspect, uh, with respect to making choices, each of the faculty will mention that in terms of their specialty. And I'll turn it over to my colleague in chemical and biomolecular engineering. If you're intending to do chemical and biomolecular engineering, uh, the course scheduling for the first year, the fall and spring semester, look very similar to uh, what Professor Seidel discussed for BME. Uh, you would take the SAGES courses in the, the first and the second semester. You would take a math course in the first and second semester. You would also take a physics course in the first and second semester. You would take Chem 111 in the fall and ENGR 145 in the spring, and a physical education course in the first two semesters as well. Uh, two things that I would like to point out that are a little bit different uh, in the chemical and biomolecular engineering scheduling. Um, in the first semester, um, instead of being an option, we really prefer that you take physics one-to-one. -one. We would like you to finish your physics courses in your first year so that you can uh, move into our chemical engineering courses in your second year. So it's really important that you register for physics one-to-one -one in the fall and then finish with physics one-to-two in the spring. The uh, second thing that um, is uh, unique to our department is a introductory course, ECHE 151. So if you're interested at all in chemical engineering, you should take this course. It's only one credit hour, and uh, it gives you an idea of what chemical engineers do, what the major is, and it will help you in making your decision whether you want to major in chemical engineering or not. So now I'll uh, pass it on to Professor Sheraldi, who will talk about the polymer science curriculum. Much as you've heard in the other two majors, uh, there, there's a common theme in the first year for the polymer science and engineering majors. Uh, again, you will take SAGES both semesters. Uh, you will jump in at the appropriate level of math. Uh, in our case, uh, the physics, whether you start in the first or second semester, is less important. Uh, for us, the, the chemistry is really more of the important jump in point. Um, if you need to take freshman chemistry, then you'll take that, and then the, the Engineering 145 in the second semester. That Engineering 145 is the key freshman course that launches you into the sophomore polymer courses. If uh, you, because of AP, you have tested out of Chem 111, well then you can take Engineering 145 in the fall, in which case you'll see me. Um, uh, something that is, something that is un uh, more unique uh, to macro is uh, Freshman research, you'll see uh, EMAC 125 listed. That is an optional experience for you. We offer it both semesters, so if you des decide to do it the second semester or you didn't get in the first semester, it's all right. You can take it the second semester. We will take about 25 freshmen each semester into a real research experience, which is how we allow you to become more familiar with polymers and decide whether this is the, the proper major for you. In a moment, we talk about uh, material science. Material science now does the same thing as well. So in fact, there really are opportunities for about 50 freshman researchers in the materials area each semester. The last thing on, on the, fresh, the freshman line I'd like to just point out is that uh, don't postpone your, your physical education courses to the end. Go ahead and get involved in there. It's a good way of meeting students, and you, you don't want to forget that uh, requirement prior to graduation. Now, talking about material science and engineering, our sister department, again, the same sages, the same math. Uh, jump in and take some, some of the ENGR courses, physics either first or second semester. Uh, the uh, engineering 145 chemistry materials is also a key course for material science. It's the, the jumping in course for sophomore material science courses. Material science offers two other interesting uh, freshman courses, uh, EMSE 110 and 120. These are courses that, uh, much like the chemical engineering course, allows you to get a little exposure to the major 
Uh, and in fact, in one of the courses, it also involves plant trips. So you'll go out and see polymers being made and metals being forged and so forth. So it gives you an idea, is this the kind of thing I want to do when, when I graduate? I'd like to pass this back over to Professor Sedell. We want to emphasize that when we're, when, for students who are particularly interested in employment upon uh, graduation with a bachelor's degree, that, that uh, we want these students to be well prepared. So we have designed uh, courses that will provide them with enough hands-on experiences that would be appropriate. In terms of getting uh, experiences that are particularly important for industry, we recommend that students will be in, uh, will be t will take advantage of the co-op and internships that are available. And uh, finally, I want to point out the fact that we have a unique facility, which is called ThinkBox, for uh, the design, development, testing of various new products hands-on, includes such things as 3D printers, and this is open to all students. I would like to also mention that uh, we want students to engage in other activities uh, beyond study. We have many organizations on campus that will provide uh, something of interest to every student. In addition to the, the, that part of your educational uh, preparation, we would like students to recognize that faculty are here to help them and advise them. And where there are questions, where stu when students have questions, they should feel confident that they can get responses from the appropriate faculty. Here are again the contacts uh, for the various departments and students should feel free to communicate with these faculty. Thank you for your attention.